Okay. Um, one of the questions I get asked quite a bit is uh, that people are trying to to do things inside code blocks, and I've been doing things inside Visual Studio now. For whatever reason, uh, the, the people that ask this um, aren't able to install um, Visual Studio. And I think it's more to do with it that uh, if you go to the, the download section here, you can download the binary re release, and then there's an option here that allows you to install code blocks with no admin privileges. So I think uh, this is the reason why people are using code blocks is because you can install it with no admin privileges. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if you can do that with Visual Studio. I think Visual Studio needs to be kind of tied uh, in there. So that's the reason why people are using it. However, I, I've downloaded this ID and I have no idea. <laughs> I have never used <clears throat> code blocks before. So this is not a tutorial. This is me just trying to figure out uh, how we can uh, get the code that I've written, uh, which is in here, uh, outside of, of here and into uh, code blocks. If you go to uh, my repository and you'll be able to download Barebones Server. Now, inside Barebones Server is the Microsoft Visual Studio solution file. So I have that downloaded already. So the first thing is, uh, I want to change this this class here. So uh, right now, <clears throat> main is uh, does uh, has this pragma comment here, and this is the reason why everything fails for code blocks and other editors. Uh, this here is a Microsoft. I think it's a Visual C plus plus compiler. No, preprocessor directive. It's a preprocessor directive because it's got the the hash there. Um, or the pound symbol, whatever you want to call it. Now, this instructs the preprocessor to include this library file. So what we're going to do is we're going to do right-click and go to Properties. And inside C++, there's a general tab. Um, nope, inside the linker, uh, there's an input tab here. And there's a thing in here that says additional dependencies. And you see there's a long list here. Uh, if you go over to the, the drop down box here and then click on edit, uh, you'll see that these are the list of the additional dependencies and Windsock is not in there. So if I add ws2 underscore 32 dot lib, which I think is the right one, uh, and of course there's no way to get back to it, um, and then click on OK and then apply and then OK. You should see that would be the right one there. So ws2 underscore 32 dot lib. OK. And now what we can do is we can get rid of that line. So now the project itself has the reference. And now our source code should, uh, and I use the word loosely, should just work. So I will run this just to confirm. Uh, and I'll start the server. And that's us there. Putty. Uh, putty. There we go. Putty. And then local host. Bare bones local. And then click on um, open. And there you go. Firefly connected on there. Hello. And then we get hello back. So that's, that's good. Everything's working uh, as expected. And nothing has changed. Uh, the only difference, well, <laughs> nothing has changed except that we, rem we removed that pragma line. So now our code should be at least more portable than it was before. So I'm going to use this same file and hopefully, um, uh, hopefully we don't run into any problems with using the same file. Do file uh, and then uh, there's an import project. And you can choose whatever version you want. So I'm going to choose Microsoft Visual Studio Solution. So I'm going to then choose the bare bones server and then click on OK. Um, it says, do you want the import file to use the default compiler? The default compiler is GCC. So I'm going to say, yep. Uh, do you want to import all the configurations, debug release? Um, yep, sure. Uh, I've already tried this in a previous attempt, which I've removed. 
Uh, so I'm going to say overwrite. And now, uh, now the problem I have is I don't have GCC. So I'm going to do build and it's going to say it can't find GCC. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just now and then I'll come back and we'll, we'll start from there. So it gives you a bit of a, bit of a hint here. It says can't find it, uh, compiler setup. Uh, tool chain, blah, 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 blah. So if we go to settings, compiler, because I installed it on my iDrive, because that's where I keep all my apps. So I'm going to go across to tool chain executables, and you see how it says C Ming. Uh, I'm just going to go into my program files code blocks Ming, Min GW, and paste that value in there, and then click on Okay, and now it should build. Well, it'll build, but it'll fail for reasons that we'll come into just next. Okay, so that's good. So the first thing is it says error main must return int. Okay, so we can fix that. That should be reasonably... Um, easy to fix. And then the other one is um, get name info was not declared in the scope. INET in top was not declared in the scope. And we can also fix that as well. So the easy one is just to change it from void to int. And then at the very bottom here, just at the very end where it says system pause, we're going to do return zero. And that's it. Um, let me just make that text a little, little bit bigger for you. Um, <clears throat> so with those commented out, what we're going to do is we include uh, include winsock2.h. I think it's winsock2.h. Okay, let's go to uh, build options, and then we go to linker settings, add, and then we're going to choose. Well, it's not in there. It is in uh, here, this library file folder here. So we're going to choose lib and then do lib wsoc32. Uh, sure. Okay. And then click on OK. And I think we can get away with adding this as well. And that should be us. Then click on build. Oh dear. Uh, line 19, return. All oh, right, okay. So I need to do return 99 to show that something bad went happened. Uh, we need to do the same thing for other ones as well. We have that there. Okay, and... Uh, max host was not found. So again, we'll just um, hard code these values in just now. So for max host, we're just going to go with, um, actually what we can do is we can grab that at the top here and just do hash define that as 1024. And where's the other one? The max server. We'll define that as 1024 as well. So we hash define find that as 1024. Okay, that should fix that. Host is not declared in this scope, probably because that's invalid. Service is not declared in the scope. Get name info is not declared in the scope, and INET intop is not declared in the scope. So we're probably still missing a library, but uh, the rest of these should be fixed okay so it's still complaining about get um, get name info and inet top you know what let's just comment that out just now and we'll worry about that in just a wee sec because uh, the rest of it is pretty I mean, it's pretty bare bones server uh, so I'm gonna do build Okay, everything is compiled. So we have everything compiled uh, for code blocks. Uh, 
uh, debugger. Okay. So GDC debugger default. Okay, executable path. Okay, so we just need to specify the executable path for the debugger. So the debugger will be uh, inside here. Then and it will be GDB32. Click on OK. Uh, and OK. And now we should be able to run it. Uh, yep, I do want to allow access. Uh, sure, let's do that. Okay, so there is, it's running just now. It should be running. So I'll do bare bones local. And I can't see whether it's working or not. It does say done though. Starting debugger. Hello. It's working. So it is up and running. This is from code blocks. And we can verify that as well. We should be able to set a breakpoint uh, in here somewhere. So I will set a breakpoint uh, here. Um, toggle breakpoint. Okay, so when I send this value here, go, this is a message. Uh, you can see that we have a breakpoint here. We can. Um, we should be able to view the contents of this. Yeah, I <laughs> again, I have not used this at all. Um, can I add that as a watch? Watch bytes received, there you go. So there's the, the number of bytes received, which is 17. Uh, and then we can uh, toggle the breakpoint, uh, toggle breakpoint, and then continue that out there. And that will return the message. So that's as we're, we're working. Uh, that's kind of the, the challenge for this video. Uh, thank you uh, for watching. Uh, if you like this video, thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, thumbs down. Let me know why, um, if you want to see any improvements. Uh, the If you're watching this separate to, if you're watching these contiguously, um, one after the other, then uh, you're probably wondering where the lock poppers one is. The last one of that will be next week. Uh, it's just that I've been asked a couple of times about uh, doing um, a video like this for not Visual Studio, if that makes sense. So some other IDE. Um, I will not be making a habit of this, unfortunately. Um, it takes long enough to do the Visual Studio ones, and that's the ones that are the sort of most common one for uh, my line of work. Uh, and also for the videos that I do here as well, because it makes it a lot easier to do, um, you know, Unity things. You can debug all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I'm not familiar at all with really any other IDE. So this has been a, a massive learning experience for me uh, today. So uh, that being said, um, I do appreciate your, your uh, time to, to view this video. And uh, I will catch you in the next one. Uh, so until next time, uh, take care and uh, keep coding. That's the important thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, happy St. Patrick's Day, I guess.